Bryce Heater sign off. Shifty work into the box. And the cross, it's in! Oh, it's Larue! It's a dream return! Hey everyone, welcome to Casual FC, an Angel City preview pod. I'm your host, Angel Morales, with my favorite co-host in the whole wide world, Mario Salazar. Boom. Hey. He might be my only co-host right now, but whatever. <laughs> He's still my favorite. <laughs> hey, everybody, you heard that right now. Keep your <laughs> it's on the open. record for real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is our mid-season recap. What the heck's going on? Where are we at? What are we looking at? How you feeling? All that good stuff. So we're officially at the halfway point. Our game against Racing Louisville was like the 13th match of the season. We are now caught up with the, t- the league. I'm half glad that we had to record this later than we when we originally Same. planned. Because we originally planned to record this before the match just because of timing and stuff. We had to postpone recording this part or this episode. And the notes have changed <laughs> from what we had <laughs> previously. They Here at Casual FC, we like to keep our optimistic view of the team and our outlook we have <laughs> rose colored glasses but we, <laughs> to say that that we were trying it was an understatement but mm-hmm. last night racing that match against racing is it gives you all the hope it like it's giving us the the energy yeah. that we need last night and helped. yes it helps a lot of these notes turned in tone (laughs) and (laughs) let's go all right so as it stands right now we have four wins three draws and six losses with 15 points total we're in ninth place tied with racing but below them due to goal differential we have scored 15 goals and had 20 goals scored against us so we're still minus five in goal differential and we need to actively make that up quickly so that we can jump in the standings along with winning So we need both of those things to go in our favor. So ideally, we start winning by more than one goal, and we we just start winning a lot. As of right now, we have six people who have scored on the season. Claire has five goals. Sid has four, including the banger from last night. Clarice, Maddie Curry, Kennedy Fuller, and Rocky all have one. I expect this number to keep growing. Based on yes. the vibe. <laughs> we need this number to keep going. If you look at the goal scorers on the top teams like KC and Orlando, they're actually, they're getting goals from everywhere. They're getting goals yeah. from the entire supporting staff, right? Yeah. The trainer is getting out there and scoring some goals. That's <laughs> what shot. we need. Yeah. Like that, that, that's the thing is that like we, for the whole, really for the first half of the season, we were really relying on Emsley being that score Sid was getting those but like we just mentioned in her recap episode which surprise you're getting double episode this double surprise episode this (laughs) so many episodes Um, (laughs) Sid scored the first three goals as headers they were all delivered to her right so there's like a difference between the five that forgot to mention this on the other episode she actually almost had a header last night too off a corner from Merritt so which is in yeah, she's tuned in. She's that's her bread and butter right now. And yes, right. But the thing is that there's a difference between the five goals that Emsley scored and the three at the moment that Sid scored that were all headers. It's like they were all being right. delivered to her. And I know there's been some really great chances that Sid has made and that just couldn't finish. And that was like that's the story of the first half is finishing in the final third, finishing those chances. So hopefully this list can tick on every single one of these people tick on a couple more goals and then also grow mm-hmm. and i want to see the i want to see the ma goal i, I was want... just gonna say i'm putting it in the universe right now i want an ma vignola goal i want sarah gordon goal i want a jasmine spencer goal those are my top three right now that's it and an Alyssa goal actually top four yeah we need the thompson time connection we need the thompson to thompson goal Ooh, spicy. This season. Yeah. Yes. All right. And with that said, 
Leading the assists for Angel City is Alyssa Thompson with five. Claire is second with two, which is still a lot. Like everybody else is peppered in with with assists a little bit here and there, but Alyssa or having the five assists. is bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. So as it, like I said, everyone has played 13 matches. The entire field is level. Everyone's caught up. And so basically from here on out, we start over. We just were on the cusp of the playoff cutoff. We lace up. We go again on Saturday and we'll see what happens. Yeah. As a preview or a look at what's coming up, right? We're right at the middle. We're at the midpoint. Bay FC mm-hmm. being our next match is going to be the beginning of the second half of the season. Surprisingly, in this first half, though, we've actually played Kansas City and Houston twice. You know, the beauty of the NWSL is that it is an <laughs> even season. Um, everybody gets to play a home and away. It's very balanced in that way. And that's where the balance stops. The schedule's wacko. And <laughs> we've played Kansas wacko and Houston. Wacko is putting it nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Kansas and Houston are behind us now. We no longer play them for the rest of the season until we're putting this out there. We are getting into the playoffs until we get into the playoffs. Um, our next match with Bay also puts them behind us. That's going to be the last time we play them, and we are done with Bay FC. Um, they have one win over us at the moment, so hopefully we can equal that out. Um, and then on to the rest of the field for the rest of the season. And one of the big ones that I'm keeping an eye on which is going to be our pride match is orlando they did not have barbara bonda the first time we played them they sure did not she is now here she is now here yeah orlando is a different team than when we saw them earlier this season different yeah it's gonna be that's gonna be a game that's for sure (laughs) want everyone healthy Everyone, they had, um, Orlando had another signing and I could never remember her name. Um, but she's another Zombian, I want to say. Another, yeah, another Zombian. Yeah. Brizol, I feel like her last name is Brizol Copper. Zombia or something? No, oh, Brizolambia. Yeah. Brizolambia. Yeah. There we go. Orlando is the team that right now I would not be surprised if they can, if they keep playing like the way they're playing, they will win the shield. They will win. No, they might not win the shield just because Kansas City is so prolific in goal scoring, but I would not surprise me if they ended up winning uh, the championship because this is a team that's been a championship caliber team for years and have just never been able to put it together when it mattered. Sid, Alex Morgan, Ali Krieger, they've had huge names. Marta, duh. Sfora alone could carry a championship team. <laughs> And yet some what all these different things have happened where it just hasn't worked out. They had great keepers. They've had just it's weird. I'm blaming Florida in general. But yeah, Orlando, Kansas City, those are the two that are just streaky and, and real hot right now. So let me see. Who else is in this league? Chicago's on the come up right now, though, because people are starting to get healthy again. They've had some wild games. The Spirit. At, like I said, Corey Bethune is the rookie of the year. You cannot tell me otherwise at this point. Yeah, no. So, and Gotham, Gotham is preparing for the Olympics. Just so in I, general. that was going to, that was going to be my next point though, is that the, so the next three matches that we have starting this second half of the season is going to be Bay, Pride, and then Gotham before this Olympic break, right? With Gotham being women's national team 2.0, I part of me thinks maybe they don't play the US team members in that match. Yeah. Right I, before the I Olympic break. Because it's maybe, send off. Yeah, it is a send off, but it's do you wanna risk or risk the last game right before they actually leave to the Olympics and go into this like month tournament? And possibly yeah, that's them. a very so we don't have that problem because we don't have <laughs> anybody have on American the national team. International, we don't have American. Yeah, but then the only other international player that we have that's going to be in the Olympics is Allie Riley. Yeah, 
Yeah, because Costa Rica, Scotland aren't in it, and Japan is, but J- June's Japan, hurt. But June's hurt. Yeah. And I don't getting the call up yet. Yeah. Think- we might get another kind of point from that. But yeah, those are the three kind of matches before this Olympic break. So it'll be interesting to see how teams start to hedge their minutes, hedge their players, things yeah. like that. But they are, even though we won this last one, we're at a point where every game is going to be crucial. Yeah, so there's, absolutely. We can't, at the very least, we need to draw. We need to get that point. Um, and then that Olympic break, it's the the NWL is not going to stop because money. And so there's going to be the <laughs> Challenge Cup 2.0 Liga MX tournament um, or Liga MX tournament. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be a thing. Um, we'll be doing some Olympic coverage. I don't think I think we'll do a quick Liga MX tournament check in. But yeah, we're going to be stuff, focusing probably. on. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's what we've got coming up. And then we've got all the other teams and another 13 matches. So let's let's find that Becky Sparkles energy. <laughs> um, we asked everyone to send in what are your thoughts and feelings about the season so far? What are your thoughts about the season coming up? If you had any questions for us, unfortunately, we didn't get any questions. Everybody was worried about the team, rightfully so. But we did get two, at least two audio messages. And Zach is going to be up first. And Zach, thank you so much for sending an audio message in. I did figure out how to download it from Instagram (laughs) because that Instagram does not make it easy. But here we go. Oh, not sure if my message went through. Casual FC, super excited that you're doing this. I'm so appreciative of the podcast, what both of you do in addition to your normal, fully packed lives. In general, I'm hopeful, a little concerned about some of the injuries that's been happening this last month and hoping some of that will get resolved in maybe this international break or summer break that we have. And I'm hopeful. I'm staying hopeful, understanding cutting how we had that fire going into the second half of the season last year. I know circumstances were very different, but hopeful on potential rush, roster adjustments and the next couple of home games. Yeah. General thoughts. Thank you so much, Zach, for sending that in. And I think we at Casual FC share that very optimistic view of things can change. Just as we saw in this last match, things can change. We've, we've heard the, we've heard the nicknames for Angel City, Marketing FC, Triage FC, because we'll give us your injured players and we'll figure out what to do with them. (laughs) And, (laughs) or like, like, we're getting there. We're getting there. And the thing is that we figure it out. And you know what? I I still believe in what Becky can do. I think she has a I think she has a grit that will yes. show up. And I know she's got the full year this year and she was trying to establish a system. Everybody's like, when is this system gonna be a thing or what's going on and i think you know what she's starting to we're starting to see the glimpses of how she's learning to adjust and adapt her system that she wants to play with the players that we have and i think she might have unlocked the key this last match so hopefully that is something that is gonna be moving forward yeah for sure and our Um, second odd before we start the second audio, I will 100% cry, at least at some point in this episode. I'm already emotional because of the last recording we just did. And it means a lot to do this. So please play that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This is going to make you cry even more. This is gonna make- <laughs> now, we've got, now we've got audio from our relentless Tamariki. We've got Layla coming in with 
you just gotta you gotta give the kids the optimistic view for everything right they're just gonna look at everything sure. as kids and that's a big part of the fan base and they're the ones that are looking up to these women especially um for what can be achieved and so yeah let's listen to uh layla hi guys my name is layla and i'm seven years old and i'm from Rina Vista, Maniki, and so far i think we're doing okay but each game i think we're getting better and i most looking forward to is hopefully the playoffs go acfc oh that just released the waterworks for, <laughs> for angela here <laughs> shut up <laughs> oh, you know what it just man it's so cool it's That's you all. not me i'm cutting onions back here for uh, <laughs> in my shed office I said shed office. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's great to hear the kind of optimistic view that the kids have. And um, we might be getting some more audio. And if we did, then I would have spliced them right before this. But um, we'll keep on going. We got a lot of responses uh, via Instagram. And so let's start off with Ethan, who reached out first. Midseason feels. I feel like there's a system that is even different from the undetweeted part of last season. Players look uncomfortable and almost like they're thinking too much about the ball moving up the side, then finding the openings and letting the players' talent shine. Some of that might be coming from the loss off what's her face from San Diego. Thumbs down emoji. <laughs> I do really think Rocky can do a lot of it, but Rocky is hesitant to travel with the ball. That being said, players are starting to shine and we have the talent on the pitch. You can see the intent from the Thompsons, Spencer, Clarice, Claire, LaRue, Bright, Fuller, Curry, even all pushing the attack and the talent is there and impressive on an individual level. We just need to give them the wings to fly and focus on the attack. The future is bright, Eh, maybe pun intended, (laughs) but let them rip. Love the pod. Love you, pod. Happy pride. And go Angel City. With a wing emoji and a city emoji. P.S. Sorry for the dissertation and thanks for the football therapy. Or football <laughs> therapy. Football. All right. So Ethan, I mean, thank you for supporting. Ethan That's is just a big hands- podcast homie. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for even responding. And yes. So we had a response from somebody whose name we don't know. We just know their Instagram handle. But their comments, I don't know how I feel about them. I have mixed feelings because we do try to spin things a little bit more positively and look for the bright spots, even when it's really difficult. Because I don't, like in any sport, I don't believe in throwing away a season. Because there's always something to do. You can always get better in different ways. And I think that's where this person was going. But... They started it off with saying, maybe just wait for the new majority investor. Dang. But I get it. It's been a really rough start to the season. So they said, meanwhile, have this year be a developmental year. Invest minutes into the youth. It's not unheard of in pro sports, which is not. No need to run around like headless chickens, changing coaches, benching the young, the youngs to try to win a championship in year three, just because you've said it publicly, which yeah, but I don't think any of the the kids are being benched too much. I don't think they have been overall. There's a difference between benching somebody and load management. And I think for the younger players, there's been a lot more load management. I still don't know what's happening with Masai Bright. I hope she's doing okay. I hope everything's okay internally with the team. It's just me. Or Casey Fair. Casey Fair, I think, is just focused on international play right now. I don't know what's going on. But she's also the youngest. So I know I don't understand because she's not making game day rosters. So I don't know. I don't know. Everything is hard. Anyway, um, it says they were wrong about year three and it takes and what it takes to win a championship. Obviously, it takes a lot. But you can have a goal and miss it but that doesn't necessarily mean you failed because you're still building something there's uncharted territory in expansion teams in any sport um so they basically just said take the l and play the kids and then let becky write it out and learn from this year and once we get the new investor go from there 
which I mean, yeah, we need the new investor to come in and help the team on the back end, but that doesn't mean we need to just throw the season away. And I hope that's not what they meant. And if they're mad, you no. can send us a message. <laughs> I will happily no, have that conversation. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't think he's talking about throwing the season away. I think it's more about, I think it's more the view or the way I was reading it and taking it was more the view of keep trying what you're going to try. Mix it up. As we were saying, like, just, we're at the bottom. <laughs> like we were saying, we we're at the bottom. Throw it against the wall. See what sticks. Let's break it, break the system and then rebuild it and see where it goes. And I do appreciate the uh, let Becky write it out and learn from this year. I, I think I don't want to, I don't want to be part of that crowd. And I've started to hear or looking or hearing little inklings of the, the Becky out crowd. And I'm like, no, yeah, that's not the right answer. Yeah. I, you, I think like she's only halfway recruited this team. Yeah. Full team yet. There's, there's a lot of other things both front office and player and there, there's so many factors that you can't just all blame it on one person and usually right. unfortunately that the head coach is the person that you you blame it on but yeah I, I appreciate the fact that he came out with let Becky write it out and learn from this too and just say if it turns out that at the end of this we don't get what we wanted but as long as we learn from it and can grow from it then that's a positive, right? So, yeah, I think we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good jumping off point. Um, so Gabe then said, "Hey, I'm responding to your mailbag slash midseason check-in question. So look, here's where I'm at. And granted, I'm just putting it in here as a caveat. Almost all of these were sent prior to last night. <laughs> yes, just one more caveat." <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He said, something has to change. Every opponent knows we're going to build out of the backfield via DD and is able to read and close us down. We're far too predictable. Nine million percent. Yes, I agree with that. The passing backwards yep. is stressful. The pa the backward passing off a free kick is stressful. Advance the ball. That's all anybody is asking for right now. He said, add to that I'm not sure where Sid is for half the game. And with Paige crying emoji gone and Sarah out I don't know that we can run this kind of scheme successfully Sid's actually putting in work she's just not getting the ball aside from last night but like I don't I'll stick up for our forwards not producing because you can't produce if you don't have a ball to score with or like if yeah. the ball's not getting to you there's not much you can do but play defense and which is what she's been doing and what all of them have been doing last night even Alyssa was just tracking back up and back, just running lines, basically, every yeah. everywhere, every end of the pitch. Said, if we can, we certainly haven't shown it. Would love to see more from our rookies. Would love to see Messiah get starts instead of Sid. Still waiting to see Casey and hype for CP to return. I honestly think Tweed is going to need to shake things up in major ways instead of tweaks or we're in trouble as a team. And I'm not sure she's here next year, which that's a good point. Like you said, I want her to be able to ride this out and get another full season under her belt, but there needs to be big tweaks so that we aren't as predictable. And last night I think was the biggest movement towards that. Yeah. The confusion of a five, three, two. What in the stands, everyone's like, did you see the lineup? Did you see the lineup? Did you see the lineup? There was like, <laughs> Ooh, it's everyone is a buzz. So I'm hoping that it all works out and it like it, it ends up being great and the, the tweaks get made and everything works the way it should and the way truly we all want it to. All right. So my friend Kay messaged us because Mario put up a, <sighs> we're doing the cutoff. <laughs> Mario had a big old typo and Kay called him out. Yeah. She's a writer. <laughs> so he yeah. had said that our cutoff for submissions is going to be June 17th, but he put 617. And, or he put, put 317 instead of 617. She goes, I'm thinking March 17th is coming, gone. And like a <laughs> winky face. But my big second half hope is that the dream, and in parentheses, okay, nightmare, I had last night about being in the middle of Iceland in September when CP makes her return doesn't come to fruition. Like a stressed <laughs> emoji and then the ghost screamy emoji. It says the pre-FOMO was real. 
And she said, CP, can you come back before September 23rd? (laughs) (laughs) And she said, I'd like to know from management what the actual plan is. This isn't sustainable, which exactly. Last night, like I said, Kay and I saluted after that Sid goal. Okay, we're back. So I'm hoping that what happened last night is the sustainability and what we've been working towards. But yeah, Kay missing out on CP's return is going to be insane if that's what comes true. So we have it on record. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't, I'm still hard pressed <laughs> to see uh, <laughs> seeing press come back in any kind of significant minutes this year. Yeah. Um, if anything, it's going to be like these kind of an 80th minute sub type thing mm-hmm. or the stoppage time sub. And I don't think she's going to get any real minutes. And then her contract is up this year. Is it, do we extend her for another year and then get her See what happens. Board? fully see what happens although the part that gets me too is that we have the room now (laughs) to bring her back but also if she comes back so does her salary and and then we saw the being the way it is and nobody knowing what's going on with the monopoly money they have one of the questions might be can we even afford cp to come back yeah we don't know we don't know those things to ruminate about i would love to be able to see her on the pitch again, even if it's for a few minutes at a time. But yeah. So uh, we also got uh, some messages from Alejandra. How do we finish more? Please, K. thanks. <laughs> Short and sweet I love and to it. the point. <laughs> yes. And yes, it's exactly like we know that we have the talent. We've seen the talent get up to that final third. We just can't finish in that final third. Once we figure that out, as we've been saying this whole first <laughs> half, it's going to be blockbuster, right? Yeah. Timothy came in with, can we please get an international star with experience, a true number nine to help our attacking third? And I, again, back to how do we finish more? How do we get mm-hmm. that player? And for everybody who might need it, a number nine is usually in reference to a striker. Like the player that you just go like, here, your job, score a goal. That's all you do. That's all you do on this team is you score a goal. And getting a true number nine means that, like, we're just getting that person that has that lethal, like, on-point kick every single time. Like, every single time. It's going to be on target every single time. It's going to be, like, top bins. It's going to be it's gonna be beautiful to see. But can we get someone with that experience? Yeah. Again. Can we? Maybe we're LA. People want to come to LA, but also, can we afford it? I uh, mm. there's Mac, variable. Yeah, Max coming in with Ma and Sarah returning is big. Yeah, but a lot needs to change. Front office failures are on top of injuries. Um, yeah, there's been some like we said it. A lot of what has been going on can't fully 100% be blamed on Becky. It's not solely her fault for things not gelling, right? Part of that is the players. Becky's not the one on the field. Like, you got to figure it out, right, on the field. But part of that is also the decisions that are being made above her, right? Decisions being made from... The other people, the powers in the office that be, that, exactly. Yeah, we that, and then a- ACFC has just been the injury prone team from since year <laughs> one. So injuries are going to be a reality for us, and learning how to overcome those really is the, the key to to our success. Janthony came in with, "Is Becky Tweed using Ted Lasso as an inspiration?" <laughs> so I thought this was funny, and so I messaged him and I said, "Hey." I love it, but can you also explain your thinking? And he came back. I'm thinking about the way the team talks about themselves and each other at press conferences. Maybe Ooh, it's the magic of four so teenagers good. and two 30-something mothers being the team leaders. Everyone is competitive, but also go out their way to support each other. And yeah, you can, yeah. you hear that from the team. They feel and they talk like they're a family, like they all support each other. When Paige left, like, they were all devastated. Like, it was, like, a big thing, right? There was no animosity there. It was just, like, 
what just happened and this is going to hurt and how do we recover whenever things happen on the pitch like they've got each other's back we just saw that with (laughs) Matthias it's it's very much I think the cohesion is there there's just weird things that we don't know why things haven't gelled the way they were and I'm gonna say it's a lot of maybe the hidden things we can't see as fans yeah and yeah. last but not least, Katie sent in, who are we getting for Henri's international spot? And why haven't we filled it? And yeah, summer transfer window's coming up. We need the help. If we're holding the spots for CP, then make that announcement. Yeah. I know that they don't want to make that announcement because maybe she's not ready, right? Well, she's definitely not ready at the moment, but... They don't want to make the announcement of, oh, we're holding the spot for her for when she comes back eventually this year. Because what if she doesn't? But it's the us not knowing and feel it's the reason why everybody hates freaking VAR. Yep. Because of the fact that like when you don't get the announcement, when all this shenanigans happens and nothing gets said and everybody's left just twiddling their thumbs in the stands being like, what the (laughs) hell? It doesn't help that you're leaving the fans in the dark. You don't have to tell us everything that's going on, but you do have to give us something when people are starting to reconsider their support or reconsider their ticket or reconsider. Like, when those conversations start popping up in forums and in on Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and whatnot, it's like when those voices start getting louder, you're going to have a problem. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, that that was. Thank you for everybody that wrote in with our little mid mid season recap. What is Casual FC looking forward to? The Olympics. Angela, you want to go first? I'm pumped. <laughs> it's I'm very much that meme of America who, and then the second, the actual second that the opening ceremonies start, I'm just like USA, just. Like, oh, I you love just international into competition. You just walk into bars with an eagle. American Honestly, eagle I, I'm just shoulder. like, rah, just a freedom eagle. <laughs> That's me. I'm, oh, I'm so excited. Before we even started recording this, I was telling Mario that Peacock is going to stream and have available for replay everything from the Olympics. So I finally get to see all the stuff I never get to watch on the broadcast, which is so cool. But Aside from the Olympics and the coverage we're doing, because we have some stuff that we're working on right now, I'm just really excited to see what happens with the team. Last night, I think, was rejuvenating for everyone. And I have hope. I never gave up completely. I was just sad and frustrated, and I didn't know what to do with those feelings. But, yeah, like, I love this team. I love this podcast. It's just great. I'm not going to – I will start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't open my eyes because tears will fall, but very genuinely, this show's been a saving grace a lot this year. Thank you for listening. Thanks for sending us stuff, for having fun, all that good stuff. But yeah, thanks. To, I'm just pumped <laughs> in this. To, to jump off that sentiment, yes, thank you. I know we say it a lot, but it really does mean – a lot to us that you guys support us and just the crazy footy therapy that we're going through whenever we (laughs) we do this we're completely doing this out of the fun right and our number one thing was to keep doing this as long as it is fun and it has been and every single time we get messages and things like that is just more encouragement and more more like validation of yeah. Yeah. Of what we're doing, of just the fact that the community is here. I We didn't have it written down and I'm just going to go to it right now. I'm pulling it up on my phone because we had a really great conversation with Dustin and we didn't put it in here, but you know what? He he did give permission to share he, it. Yeah. He gave us the um, authorization. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to read it from here. This message isn't necessarily for the pod, although I'm okay if you share it. But I really do appreciate being a part of the ACFC community. I had to go solo to the game tonight, and the people sitting next to me were so cool, and we had a blast cheering together. It's a great thing to be a part of, and you two play a big role in cultivating the sense of belonging 
a sincere thank you to you both. And that we share the Instagram account. So if you ever <laughs> message us, we try to remember to put our name before <laughs> our response so you know who you're talking to. And we both saw this and I think <laughs> Angela got there first. And then yeah, we I both started so. talking with Dustin <laughs> back and forth and I had to keep writing our names in front. He thought it was hilarious that he knew who we were to- who he was talking to, essentially. But I think we both had the feels last night, yeah. both from the game, but <laughs> also from just genuine interactions like this. And thank you to everybody who's been a part of the journey for every and share that you've done on our social media to buying something from our shop. That's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the fact that we've seen people at the stadium with a shirt we we designed or something is insanity. Like we so have, thank you. We have and... whole groups of friends because of this in a year. Yeah. And it's so cool. And like Mario and I joke, we went from not knowing each other aside from a supporter group and just, oh, I've seen your name before to now being like in my pinned text messages because I'm not trying to scroll. We text each other all the time anyway, so it doesn't matter. And we're constantly, no, you're one of my best friends. And we talk to each other all the time. I'm either texting Eva, my mom, or you, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. That's it. (laughs) Pretty much same thing here. Yes, thank you. And then I realized that I didn't even answer my own question, which was what was casual of still looking for (laughs) And what I'm looking towards crying. is I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm looking towards is the just the finding the magic that the team found with Becky last year. Finding that that sparkle, that just yeah. grit that they found last year and took them to eleven games undefeated. I'm not asking for eleven games undefeated. If you do fucking great i wouldn't hate it (laughs) yeah (laughs) but what we saw yesterday was beautiful it was gelling it was the spark that we saw from last year's second half of the season so funny that it showed up at the halfway point but you know what if it took this long for everybody to just figure out those little pieces and it works the rest of the season I'm here for it. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Among the other notes that everybody has said about the players, about playing time, about who we want to see on the field. But really, it just comes down to we have our community, Mm -hmm. our ACFC community, our podcast community here, the community that's developed around all the other podcasts for Angel City. And they are their own community, too. And the fact that they're starting to figure it out and make it click is very promising and is exactly what we want. That's really all we can ask from them, right? Beyond wins. But <laughs> yep. do it as long as it's fun. The same reason we're doing this. As long as it's fun, having them keep playing on the field is all we can ask for. So that's what we're looking for. You guys know our normal sign off. If you like what you hear, hit the subscribe button, share it with someone brings us good luck we'll send it to the team support us the way you guys have been supporting us by doing stuff on social media liking sharing commenting on posts leave us a review all of those things help immensely more than and if you do have the opportunity grab some merch get yourself a nice coffee mug with our casual pride logo if you want to support us just by buying us a coffee in quotes check out buymeacoffee.com slash casual fc pod follow all our socials casual fc pod on instagram twitter threads and tiktok and before i break down thank you (laughs) thanks everybody 